I often think that predators just cruise through life and have an easy time of it. Big teeth, sharp claws, kill whenever you want to, but that's not the case whatsoever. Dig deeper into their secret lives and you expose a world of hurt, and sometimes heart. I'm Boone Smith, big cat tracker and wildlife biologist, and I've seen how these hunters struggle just to get by, especially in remote or clashing landscapes. Take the lion, everyone's idea of a perfect killer. But there are places in Africa where they have to pull off miracles just to survive. We caught one of those miracles on camera. A mind-blowing moment that has amazed scientists. Here in the Great Rift Valley, where the African continent is tearing itself apart. There lives an old lioness who should be dead. This once magnificent predator is hurting. Her mouth won't close properly because of a broken jaw that healed badly. The average lioness hunts a thousand times in her life. Taking on big prey and big risks. How she can eat with that mouth is a mystery. Injured predators just don't survive in places like this. The wall of the rift lies to the west. An undrinkable alkaline lake to the east. It's the dry season. The only source of fresh water for miles around is steaming hot springs bubbling out of the wall. It's a magnet for big game. But there are no free drinks here. Meet the hot springs pride. Nine lions that have figured out how to make a strange, bleak landscape work for them. And somehow keep their aging matriarch alive. They know water is the key. Control the water, control the prey. Press the button and drop it on the zone. Took all you had to strip me to the bone. Don't slam the door, wait out deep in hell. Took a chance on you and it's time to ring the bell. The pride has been passing down the secret to survival here for generations. But the king of beasts can be driven from the throne by the smallest things. Blood-sucking flies have been known to kill lions. Whether through blood loss or infection, Flies have decimated prides before. So these resourceful cats head for the trees, above the flies. 
though the bulky lions aren't great climbers. not the most comfortable place to hang out. But it's better than life on the ground. Hungry and weak, the old lioness has to bear her misery alone. As the late afternoon brings some relief, the pride descends to hunt. On today's menu, Cape Buffalo. Very tasty, but very, very violent. prey weighs more than all the hunters put together. It could feed them all or kill one of them. Stunning moment, one that astonished our experts. The old, handicapped lioness joins them at the carcass. She's hungry, but she can't tear through the tough hide with her injured jaw. It looks hopeless, until another lioness does something that changes the way we think about lions. She pulls the carcass open so the old girl can get to the tender meat inside and patiently holds it. how the wounded predator has lasted so long. Her caretakers may well be her sisters and daughters. And with their help, she continues to survive against the odds. Perhaps it is the toughness of their lives in the rift that binds the hot spring's pride so closely. Not all families in the rift get along so well. North of the Lion's Springs is a strip of forest 
where dysfunction is the family way. This young baboon is learning what all teenage primates know. Adolescence sucks. And in this place, it can get you killed. His olive baboon troop is an enormous mob of primate predators, nearly 200 strong. They have little to fear but each other. Especially in an explosive group like this. Even leopards, which hunt baboons, know to steer clear of this unruly band. Adolescents like Junior can't help but get into trouble. He's compelled to investigate and annoy everything. Like teenagers everywhere, he and his posse love harassing the neighbors. Here's a new distraction. They've discovered our camera. But the big males have had just about enough of their antics. The remote camera becomes an object of baboon fascination. It's solid enough. Doesn't seem to be breathing. Tastes awful. Like any adolescent, Junior thinks he's too cool to hang out with the kids. But if he knew that a brutal taste of adulthood awaits him, he might not be in such a hurry to grow up. Adult males, in a constant fight for dominance, go off violently at a moment's notice. They'll even rough up infants. But this fearless mom tells him to back off. Dust and testosterone fly. And Junior finds himself right in the middle of the fray. Soon, the adult males won't tolerate Junior anymore. 
Once he's old enough to discover girls, they'll drive him out. And he's about to be reminded what the big males are capable of. For baboons, meat is a real prize. They fixate on a small antelope and ambush it in the dense brush. Lion-sized fangs do their nasty work. Someday Junior will assume the mantle of Predator as well. It won't be long before he's cast out. His future lies with another troop. Further to the north, the forces that are ripping the continent apart have thrust parts of Ethiopia thousands of feet in the air. The Bale Mountains serve as cloud collectors, a major source of fresh water for eastern Africa. These islands in the sky harbor many creatures found nowhere else. Strange creatures. None stranger than this one. It's the big-headed mole rat. Beady eyes, tiny ears, and giant teeth make it look like this critter was put together by a committee with questionable taste. It had better be on the lookout. The exterminator is coming. This is the Ethiopian wolf, one of the rarest carnivores on Earth. Fewer than 500 remain. She loves mole rats. And she's perfectly built to target the weird rodents. Her large ears, like radar dishes, tune in to the slightest underground scrabbling. But catching the elusive mole rat requires exquisite timing. The beasts only pop above ground for a total of 20 minutes a day. So when she wants to whack a mole rat, she needs to pull out her secret arsenal. The wily mole rats emerge fleetingly, forage like crazy, then retreat and close the door behind them. But the Ethiopian wolf has some cunning weapons of her own. Her 
Her pointy snout is her warhead. Her body, a ballistic missile. The mole rat's fate is sealed. The Ethiopian highlands used to support thousands of wolves and their unique appetites. No longer. This female and her mate are the last of a 23-member pack. The rest wiped out by rabies and distemper. But they have a den full of growing mole rat killers. Healthy and rambunctious. <laughs> These four pups represent hope for a new pack and a new future. Some predators have adapted to become specialists of one particular environment. Other predators, like this guy right here, have to learn to become masters of more than one. Where rivers run down to the sea in the Carolinas, Freshwater mingles with salt water to create a brackish borderland. Life can be tough here. even for a huge American alligator. She can't chew, so she thrashes her prey apart. This lady will go through two to 3,000 teeth in a lifetime, thanks to her energetic eating style. But she's primarily a freshwater reptile and can't stay long in this water. If too much salt builds up in her system, she'll die. The female returns to an enormous mound of decomposing brush and mud her creation, and her obsession. She's ready to tear into anything that threatens the three dozen eggs within. dug out a small wallow next to her nest so she can get her freshwater fix while keeping an eye on her organic incubator. Here she can relax and let her heartbeat drop to two beats a minute. But her spa evaporates under the intense summer sun. She heads off in search of more fresh water. It will turn out to be a terrible mistake. Raccoons love alligator eggs. 
These night bandits are the most prolific gator nest raiders in North America. But at a gator's nest, it's best to eat and run. Our mother returns to an alligator's worst nightmare. If reptiles can look despondent, this is it. Millions of years of instinct have programmed her to stay, just in case the raccoon didn't get all three dozen. She's rewarded by the sound of hope. She checks the hatching eggs one by one. puts her powerful jaws to use. Not as ferocious killing machines, but as a ferry to the river. She'll look after her five survivors for up to a year or more, fiercely defending them from all threats, including raccoons and other gators. After a long history of persecution, the American alligator is back. Just at the southern tip of Texas, another predatorial comeback can be seen at low tide. The reddish egret's feathers were once all the rage in women's hats, and the creatures nearly disappeared. Now they can celebrate their gradual return. It looks like shameless exhibitionism, but his frenetic dance masks a clever hunting strategy. His unpredictable gyrations disturb the fish. His wings create a shady spot that draws the fish in. It looks crazy, but it works. Low tide makes for great fishing, but opens up unexpected pathways for other predators, like coyotes. Time to get back to his chicks. Back in the Carolinas, where land meets ocean, Predators can be forced to break all the rules. But the most intelligent try to defy the laws of nature. It 
It's a mini tsunami of dolphins, seemingly on a suicide run. But there's a devious genius behind this bizarre act. Dolphins can hunt the old fashioned way, one fish at a time. But this is the Seabrook Island Gang, a pod of extraordinary bottlenose dolphins. They're lining up for an all you can eat buffet. And behind each smile lies a cunning hunter. During low tide, schools of mullet have nowhere to hide. Scouts echolocate the fish, which they can sense underwater from a football field away. They herd the mullet against the shoreline. Assemble into formation. And unleash their amphibious assault. They rush the shore, always on their right sides, though no one knows exactly why. Mullet and pelicans go flying every which way. They're the only pot of dolphins that do this here, and it's not for amateurs. At 400 pounds apiece, they could get stuck on the beach and die from sunburn or just their own crushing weight out of water. But the risks are worth it. This astounding predatory secret handed down from mother to young, will be passed on to their clever descendants. Half a world away, on a remote island in the Philippines, the clash of land and sea is complete. Sheer cliffs, and strangling jungles bring the food chain into eerily stark relief. Its creatures, blown here, rafted here, are just left high and dry by ancient retreating oceans are stuck with each other. Nighttime on the forest floor brings out the creepy crawlies. If you don't like bugs, place hands over eyes now. Cockroaches thrive here, but this roach has no houses to plunder, so it scavenges in the leaf litter. Bad time to be oblivious to your surroundings. The cockroach continues on its unwitting way. But the giant scorpion is relentless.
Despite having up to 12 eyes, the 7 inch scorpion has poor vision, so it relies on a complex set of killer resources. Tiny, hair like sensors on its pincers detect vibrations in the air. Chemical receptors brush the ground and pick up traces left by other creatures. Oh yeah, and there's that stinging tail too. But if you've got giant nasty claws, why not just use them? It's hard to feel sorry for a cockroach. But a scorpion can have that effect. It's a slow, deliberate eater, sometimes taking several hours. It injects digestive fluids into the roach, liquefying its insides. Then, tiny pincers in its mouth delicately tear it open and snack. Strangely fastidious, the scorpion carefully cleans its pincers. But another special sense tells it something's wrong. For the scorpion, moonlight means danger, because it's exposed. Under our ultraviolet lights, it glows. Why has long been a mystery. One possible answer, the scorpion's whole body may act as a giant eye, picking up faint UV light from the moon. That tells it to find cover. And the larger appetite is headed straight for him. This strange creature is a bear cat. She's neither a bear nor a cat and smells like buttered popcorn. The little gymnast is more at home in the trees than on the ground. Red eyed and fierce, the bear cat will put up a nasty fight if cornered. But there are some creatures she knows not to mess with. Like the infamous monitor lizard. The most intelligent lizard in the world. It's a good thing she's a better climber than the lizard. This island is overrun with water monitors, and each is armed with a powerful tail, sharp claws, and a venomous bite. They can reach seven feet but this guy's not there yet. He's on the small side, so he lives by his wits. Like a snake, he uses his tongue to capture odors in the air. And there's something irresistible. He loves the smell of carrion in the morning. But he'll have to get in line.
pair of bruisers has already staked their claim to the carcass. They have no intention of sharing. The big lizards momentarily lose interest in the carrion. And this gives our underdog his chance. But the trick doesn't go unnoticed. The biggest contender chases him down and attacks viciously. He slinks away from the monitor madness to recover. Weeks pass, and as soon as he's strong enough, he leaves the forest behind. The underdog has paid a terrible price. A dead crab makes a sorry meal. But he needs to move on. The bigger lizards own this stretch of beach. Monitors have been known to kill one another. He'll have to take his chances in the water in search of a less hostile cove or island to live out his days. Yeah, I can see 